All right. The ability to work with data is increasingly becoming important in the country if, of course, we're hoping to meet uh, the uh, fourth industrial revolution plans. The Explore Data Science Academy is coming out and saying it's doing its part in ensuring those necessary skills are available in the market. You start now, you reap the benefits later. The Academy has a very ambitious plan uh, to train 5,000 new data scientists by the year 2025. Uh, the man who knows all about it, Mark Schroeder, the Chief Commercial Officer of the Explore Data Science Academy. Academy joins us uh, on the show. Mark, good to have you with us. Uh, stupid question, what is data science? <laughs> I get that question a lot. Oh, okay, um, but, but possibly uh, for a lot of the viewers out there, the simplest way to explain it is that, um, you know, if you look at the world and, and everything that was analog is becoming digital. Everything that's digital is being stored. And everything that's being stored is being analyzed real time to make things quicker, better, faster, more efficient, and to create business value. So when it comes to your organization now, we'll get on to how you're going to get to 5,000 people. I imagine with the, uh, the respectfully, the, the Gen Ys, the Gen Xs, uh, they're very digital savvy. This, I don't imagine, is as big a leap uh, to move into as it would have been for me, for example, 10, 15 years ago. The access to data, uh, the access to information is, is, is far more profound now uh, than it was then. It must be much easier for you to find uh, those students. Sure. So, I mean, how we actually find our students is, is we have an inclusive recruitment uh, policy. We recruit students on aptitude and attitude, mm. not necessarily whether they went to the right schools or universities or through the traditional educational system, which we find struggles with that ability to train these skills at scale. So you're quite right. The data is ubiquitous. We believe that corporate South Africa has a significant demand for this type of talent and these skills. We believe that South Africa has a a large amount of talent and with this one-year intervention we can bridge that gap and actually solve for both sides of that equation. The, the irony of an answer like that, it's a very good answer, is there's a, there's a large need in the private, you know, possibly public sector for data scientists, yet we're still sitting with 53 percent unemployment. The, the two almost don't correlate, do they? So, so largely our, our mission statement is to help reduce uh, youth unemployment and that's what we set out to do with this very ambitious goal of uh, 5,000 data scientists by 2025. And if you look at our stats heading into our third year now, we've got 500 students, we've got a 90% placement ratio at an average sort of salary of around just under 400K per annum. Um, and if we continue on that trajectory with the increased demand that we're seeing, uh, we think those goals are quite achievable. So when uh, someone is watching this now, perhaps it's a parent uh, who has a child who isn't too sure what they want to do, uh, obviously with the access to technology, it's this one-year program that you're talking about. This could be an option for them. They think, perhaps I could push my child in this direction, or someone who's watching might go, I want to get involved in this. When you say aptitude and attitude, what makes a good data scientist? What are the kind of qualities you would, you would generally have? So traditionally we look for, for problem solving skills. So if we look at the traditional sort of educational system, um, it's very much sage in the stage, you're given a lot of textbooks to read and you recite that and you sort of get your answer and you pass your test. Um, effectively what we're looking for is the ability to solve problems. Critical, critical thinking, uh, problem solving abilities, abilities to work in a team, ability to collaborate, uh, ability to communicate, whilst at the same time having an aptitude for sort of maths, stats, problems of the uh, 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 sort of pattern recognition, um, as well as the ability to learn something digitally online, such as, such as coding. And we find when we marry that, we can, uh, we can effectively solve for that problem. So if someone does get selected for the course, they do enroll, uh, they apply, and they are accepted into this, uh, what are the kind of, what's the kind of infrastructure that they need? They may not have a high-end PC. They might not even have access uh, to a high-end PC. How does your company try and get around that, especially with that ambitious target of 5,000 people by 2025? Yeah, so we, so we train off a digital platform, which allows us to scale uh, really effectively. And we actually offer sort of two streams. So our primary flagship course is a, it's a, a, a CETA accredited NQF level five course where we recruit these students onto our campus and we actually uh, uh, offer those facilities for the students. We also have an online course where individuals just with uh, access to uh, a PC and internet connectivity can, uh, can, can log on to the program and complete that course anywhere in the country. Uh, you mentioned earlier there's uh, some 90% placement uh, that uh, you guys are working with at the moment. What sort of industries are looking for data scientists? It sounds like any company in any industry would want someone as a data scientist, but are there uh, particular industries that people tend to move more towards? So, so certainly 
all businesses at some point in time are going to need data science skills. Uh, a lot of them are just behind the curve and catching up. But if you had to look at the early adopters, um, I mean, I think it fits quite nicely into the telco space, uh, the financial services space, as well as retail. Um, and as you can imagine, there's a significant amount of, of data in those particular industries. Um, another area that's really growing quickly is in the global business outsourcing uh, uh, sector. Um, and as call centers actually move to digital houses full of data, uh, there's significant demand in that area as well. And we see a, a lot of growth happening in that space and, and employment opportunities as well. What does the day of a data scientist look like? Let's pick one of the industries you, you chose. I'm trying to, trying to help those who might be interested in this going, what would I actually do? Let's use the retail sector. Uh, someone comes through your course, uh, they get offered a position or a placement with a retail company. What are they actually doing? What are they, what's the company expectation from them? What do they do on a daily basis? So effectively, you're trying to solve, you're trying to solve business problems. And, and businesses, by nature, will always be capitalistic. They'll always try and find efficiencies in order to find a, a output. Um, if we had to look at a retail, retail sort of sector, I guess a uh, individual would be supplied with a significant amount of data in that organisation, and that could be, you know, various pricing models for perfume. And you could have to solve for uh, what is the right price point for a perfume against a specific demographic in a specific area in order to maximize the sales of a specific uh, perfume. If you had to look at the banking environment, potentially you're looking at propensity to take a credit card based on your home loan status and your retail spending habits. You know, and those are sort of two mm. of the type of examples out there that a data scientist would solve for. Immediately, you start seeing a return on the investment from the business perspective. You're no longer guessing, you're using the numbers to, to back up your predictions uh, and, your, and your pathway essentially. Uh, someone watching now, they're obviously very interested, we've given them the hook, they want to get involved in this. Uh, tell us where we can find you, I imagine there's websites, the socials of the world, uh, but as part of your answer, if you can Mark, before I say goodbye, uh, what you mentioned aptitude and attitude. There's a lot of young students that perhaps didn't do as well as they wanted to in matric, some perhaps didn't even finish matric. Are they out of the running with something like this? So we have uh, a, a lot of people who were in university, dropped out of university, life happened, uh, never went to university, couldn't afford it, um, and certainly no one is excluded. Um, I've seen uh, maths master students really struggle with our aptitude test because they struggled with the fundamental problem solving sort of ability. So it's, it's very inclusive. Uh, it's a reduced period of time to study. You're not having like a three-year mm. sort of period um, as opposed to, you know, exclusive sort of models over three years, which is, which is expensive. So a very open recruitment policy. So there's hope for those of us who can't count beyond three. Uh, where can people find you, Mark, before I say goodbye? So without giving you the, the dotting the R's and crossing the T's, you know, just Google Explore Data Science Academy. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, that'll take you to our, our website. And on there, it'll talk to our... Uh, uh, opening of our recruitment uh, for the launch of our next uh, academic curriculum, which starts in July. Uh, towards the end of this month, we'll be opening that up online, log on, uh, pass the aptitude test, and then uh, from there, you're on the journey. Oh, great. I've got to do a test. Mark, thank you very much indeed. Appreciate your time coming in. Well done. And I'm sure in uh, five years' time, we're going to talk about those 5,000 uh, students that you've enrolled. Appreciate you coming in uh, this morning to speak to us. Mark Schroeder, the Chief Commercial Office Officer of the Explore Data Science Academy. You want more information, as you heard Mark say, uh, just head over to Google and look for uh, uh, the Explore Data uh, Science Academy.